Hello best friends and welcome back to the kitchen. Today is a little bit different though because I'm not actually baking. Lamb Sock have seen my baking videos and have decided to put my savoury culinary skills to the test. They've asked me to make a lamb dish, so that is what I'm going to do. Now, if you're not sure what lamb sock is, I'll put a link in the description box. It's basically a place where you can go to find lamb dishes from all over the world, which is something that I would have avoided until quite recently. My nan used to make me lamb all the time when I was a kid. Now, she can't use the internet, so she'll never hear me say this, but it was absolutely disgusting, like really, really, really foul, and I think that that actually put me off lamb for a very, very long time. And I thought I hated it until I was at one of these really swanky, classy parties quite recently, and there were canapes. I was hangry, so I took one without asking what it was, put it in my mouth, and it was incredible. When I asked the lady, she told me it was lamb, and I was like, oh my god, my nan has ruined part of my life. Since then, I've been ordering it more, but I have yet to cook with it. So, I'm going to attempt to make lamb burgers, which I hear are very, very delicious. These are your ingredients. Look how well laid out my ingredients are. This is what you need. Ginger, garlic, onion, chilli, coriander seeds, cumin seeds, turmeric, bread rolls, Greek yoghurt, red onion, lime, sweet potatoes, salt and pepper, mango chutney, tomatoes, coriander, oil, and of course, your lamb. When you buy your lamb, make sure you look for an assurance label such as the red tractor logo. This basically means that it's farm assured, so you know the farmer who made this lamb is responsible, and you can track it right back to where it started until it gets into your tummy. It's a bit harder to track from then on, but you know that it's safe and that it's been well resourced. Let's get cooking. My first job is to preheat my oven to 200 degrees. Okay, oven, you're the oven. You need to go to there. Going well so far. Okay, I need to crush two cloves of garlic. I don't actually own a garlic crusher, so I'm going to attempt a method that Jamie Oliver taught me when I met him uh, about how to crush garlic with the biggest knife you've ever seen. This could go horrifically wrong and you may end up having finger burgers, but we'll see. The first things first, to separate your garlic, get your clove, put it down and whack it. Oh my god, I hit that much too hard. <laughs> okay, they went everywhere. You might have underestimated my strength then. Two cloves. Cut the flat end off, like this. Okay, get rid of that bit. Turn your knife on its side, now please don't try this at home unless you don't blame me. <laughs> uh, get your knife and then just crush. Oh my god, it's actually really easy. And then the skin should just come off. Oh my god, that's so easy. I don't know if you can see that very well, but look, that is one clove crush. I'm just going to chop it a little bit more. When you do that, please, for the love of god, keep your fingers away from the blade. Otherwise you will chop them off and I don't want to get sued. Please, check me out with my chopping skills. I'm going to add my chopped garlic into my one kilogram of lamb mince. Swing! Finely chop the white onion. Am I going to cry? That is the question. I have my contact lenses in and I think that stops you from crying. When Tanya chops an onion, she goes mental. Like her eyes, her nose, she starts dribbling. It's horrendous. Oh, okay, I can feel it. <laughs> oh, my eyes. Whoa! Apparently, if your eyes start watering, you're supposed to put a spoon in your mouth to stop them from doing that. Oh, how it helps, but apparently, it oh. I admit it, it's not helping at all. <laughs> mm. it's so the spoon does nothing at all, it just is a hindrance. Ah, choppy, 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 choppy. Then the onion goes in with the lamb and the garlic so far. More to come though. Next, add one to two tablespoons of your mango chutney. One to two. Followed by a three centimeter piece of fresh ginger, peeled and grated. I don't have a grater, I don't think, so it's gonna be peeled and chopped. Very, very small. How big is three centimeters? In case you haven't noticed, this is my first time with ginger. Oh yeah, ginger is fun to chop. Then one red chili, de-seeded and finely chopped. Here we go! My knife is really sharp. Which scares me. Now get rid of the seeds. You don't want them, because you will burn your house down. I've touched the chilli now, which means I can touch nothing else. Eyes, other areas, they'll all burn. Chop it, chop it, chop it, chop it. I have chilli all over my fingers and it smells really hot. 
Is it bad that I kind of want to try it? Add your chilli to your mixture. Also add one teaspoon of coriander seeds and one teaspoon of cumin seeds, both crushed. I'm going to get the back of a big spoon and just try and squish them down. I hope they don't fly away. Oh, that is so satisfying. Yeah. So apparently, by adding these spices, I'm making my lamb mints into something called keema mints, which is used in a lot of Indian dishes. So, I guess I'm kind of making like a curried burger, which I'm not complaining about. Okay, adding the cumin and coriander seeds to the mixture. Then add a quarter of a teaspoon of ground turmeric. Why a quarter? That stuff must be hardcore. Woo! Oh, salt and pepper, then mix together. Okay, so pepper. Sprinkle of salt. Let me mix together with our hands in there. Great. Okay, mixing. Oh, oh, do you know what? I love it. Oh, it's so weird. Yeah, food is fun. Now, I'm reading it from here, and it says careful not to overwork the mixture. How do I know? That's not overworked yet, it's not even mixed in properly. That is my mixture mixed, which is really good because I have a little cut on my thumb and having chilli in it is absolutely agony. So I'm going to wash my hands now. Ouch! It turns out I wasn't actually finished with the mixture yet because now I need to divide it into 8 to 10 burgers and put on a tray with a little bit of oil so they don't stick. So tray! Tray! I'm going to put it all in. And that. Okay. <laughs> there you go, burger. One ball. I'm going to need another tray. Tray number two. It's going to oil them both a little bit so they don't stick too much. Now there isn't actually any instructions about how to make these balls into burgers. So I'm just going to roll them up a little bit and then just squish down. I mean it's not the prettiest burger I've ever seen but that's kind of burger shape. And I'm a very rustic kind of guy. I probably should have read this through beforehand because I don't need 10 burgers. Burgers! They're looking pretty burgery now. Uh, I need to wash my hands again because I've got chilli in my cut. Whilst I'm leaving these to stand, I'm going to make my sweet potato wedges that are going to go with these. Two sweet potatoes, washed. I guess I'm just going to slice it down the middle and then make it into a wedge shape to slice it at like 45 degrees. I'm going to keep these really, really simple. They're chopped up into wedges just like this. I'm going to put some oil in this tray, rub some salt on them, make sure they're covered and just whack them in the oven along with the burgers. And give them a good old rub. Food is quite sexy isn't it? They look really good. I want to eat them. While I was preparing them my lamb was resting and now I'm going to put everything in the oven for 20 minutes. So while they're cooking, all I need to do to make my relish is to quarter six tomatoes and de-seed them and dice them. Add 200 grams of Greek yogurt, a bunch of coriander roughly chopped, one small red onion, finely chopped, and a squeeze of lemon or lime juice. That sounds pretty easy. One tomato. Quartered. Deseeded. And finely chopped. One down, five to go. Added into the yogurt. Tomato number six going in. Next up, coriander. Coarsely chopped. Coriander. One small red onion, it said. This is not a small one, so I'm going to use just half of it. Finely chopped. I'm getting good at chopping things. Although I'm getting very close to my fingers now. And finally, the juice of one lime. Squeeze! I love lime. Ooh. That was very limey though. There you go, all your ingredients. Mix them all together. And that is your relish. Not very relishy, in my opinion, but apparently it's a relish. How good does that sound? Wow, that's really good. I'm not, wow, it's really good. I'm not really a big fan of mixing yogurt with savoury things, but that is like 
incredible. My burgers are just about to be done, so uh, I'll dish up and come back to you. I very much doubt I'm going to win any awards for presentation, and the burgers did shrink a little bit, so I should have gone for eight rather than ten. Uh, I've actually got two in there right now, but it smells incredible. There is no possible way I'm going to be able to pick this up and get it in my mouth, so I'm going to get a knife and fork. Fingers crossed, I'm better at cooking lamb than my nan, because this took me quite a while. That's so amazing. Like, really genuinely, really good. I'm not just saying it because I made it. It's actually really great. Wow. I surprise myself every time I do one of these videos because I can bake and I can actually cook. I can do normal things. Next stop, I'm gonna tie my own shoelaces. That is it from my kitchen today. If you do recreate this, then show me on Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag cooking with Jim. And I'll be back really, really soon with another baking with Jim. And I have the best idea in the world. It's gonna be delicious. Also, if you want more lamb recipes, then make sure you check out the Lamb Stock YouTube channel. There'll be a link down there. I love you and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye.